Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2 Tutorial 17. This tutorial will review accounting for participating dividends. This tutorial has four main learning objectives. The first will be to review the calculation of participating dividends for preferred and common shares where the preferred shares are non-cumulative and non-participating. Next, we'll review calculation of participating dividends again this time where the preferred shares are cumulative and non-participating. Third, once again, the calculation of participating dividends for preferred and common shares, but this time where the preferred shares are cumulative and fully participating. And finally, how to calculate participating dividends for preferred and common shares where the preferred shares are cumulative and participating to a particular total, in this case, 12%. This tutorial is based on the Banya Limited example, so please make sure that you have downloaded and previewed it prior to proceeding. There are four requirements for this tutorial. We'll do them in sequence, so we'll list them all here. So we'll need to calculate the preferred and common share dividends, so how much the preferred and common shareholders will receive under each of the following assumptions once again. So the preferred shares are non-cumulative and non-participating, cumulative and non-participating, cumulative and fully participating, and cumulative and participating to 12%. So let's begin with the non-cumulative and non-participating preferred shares. The first thing that we have to do in allocating the dividend, the company has issued a total of $204,000 in dividends to be allocated between the preferred and common shareholders. So the first thing we have to do is we always start with the preferred shareholders because the preferred shareholders get theirs first. And in this case, the preferred dividends are non-cumulative, so we do not need to worry about any dividends in arrears. The only thing that we need to account for for the preferred shares is the current year dividend, and there are 40,000 preferred shares that pay an 80 cent dividend per share. So that's $32,000 in preferred dividends. We like to create a couple of columns, one for the preferred, one for the common, and then a total. So you can see we're already starting to allocate a sum to the preferred shares. Then on the next reveal here, because the total dividend is 204,000, the preferred uh, shares are non-cumulative and don't participate then all the remainder goes to the common shares. 204,000 total dividends minus 32,000 in preferred is 172,000. And then we have a total column here, 32 plus 172 is equal to 204,000. So this is the easiest type of combined dividend to deal with is when the preferred shares are non-cumulative and non-participating. Next up, the preferred share dividends are now cumulative but non-participating. In this case, we have to now start looking at the dividends in arrears for the preferred shareholders. So again, we always start with the preferred shareholders. There are 40,000 shares that pay an 80 cent dividend. We know this, but two years are in arrears. So the first $64,000 of the total dividends must be applied to the dividends in arrears. Then we'll look at the current year. And this is exactly the same as it was in the uh, previous requirement where the shares were non-cumulative. We've gone back two years and captured the 64,000 in arrears. Then we have 32,000 for the current year. Again, the same 40,000 at 80 cents. That's 32,000 total. And we have not yet allocated anything to the common shareholders, right? And that starts to happen now. The preferred share dividends are still non-participating. So all we have to do is make sure we catch up with the preferred shareholders, which we have, the arrears in the current year. And that means that the remainder, all 108,000 that are left, because we work backwards, here's the total 204,000. We have to take off the 32,000 and the 64,000. And that leaves 108,000 uh, left over. So again, 96,000 in preferred share dividends plus 108,000 in common share dividends is total 204,000. And we've completed that one. Now we'll proceed with requirement three, where the preferred shares are cumulative and fully participating. What we have here, of course, we start with the dividends in arrears, as we did in the second requirement, because the first requirement, they were not cumulative. So the first 64,000 goes to cover dividends in arrears. Then we capture the additional 32,000 in preferred shares for the current year. But now we need to allocate something to the common shares. Both the preferred and common shareholders now participate in any of the remainder. But before we deal with the final remainder, we have to factor in the current year participation. 
we can determine how much the preferred shareholders are actually participating based on the 32,000 in dividends divided by the 400,000 preferred share value. And remember, these are from the balance sheet. The preferred shareholders are getting 8% of the preferred share value as a dividend. That means the common shareholders can also get 8% of their common share value. So if we take 8% times 600,000, that's this $48,000. Totaling now, 32 plus 48 is 80,000. Next, we deal with the remainder. The total dividend is 204,000. We had 64 and 80, leaving 60,000 remainder split between participating and common on this basis. The 400,000 preferred share value divided by a million dollars, which is the preferred share plus the common share value. Again, these are dollars from the balance sheet. So that's 40%. So they get 40% of the $60,000 remainder. That's 24,000. Then that means the common shareholders would get their respective value, right? If we've considered in the denominator, the preferred shares plus the common shares, and the preferred shares were 400 divided by a million, the common shares are 600 divided by a million. So that's 60%. So basically this 60,000 remainder is split 60-40 between the common and preferred. Alternatively, you could determine what the participation rate is. So rather than taking the preferred share value divided by the total, the common share value divided by the total, we could say, hey, we have a remainder here of 60,000 divided by a million dollars is 6%. So we would then take that 6% times the preferred share value, and that's 24, and the common share value of 600,000 times 6% is 36,000. So that's the alternative way that you can arrive at these two. Of the total, 204,000 in dividends, 120 is allocated to the preferred shareholders, plus 84,000 to the common shareholders, and that's that. Now the fourth requirement, where the preferred shares are now cumulative and participating, but this time only to 12%. We start the same way we did in the last couple of requirements. The preferred shares in arrears, 64,000, the current year, 32,000. And remember, we allocated 48,000 to the common shares based on an 8% relative participation. The preferred shareholders get 32,000 in dividends divided by the 400,000 in preferred share value. That's 8% times 600,000 in common shares is 48,000. Then, because the total participation of the preferred shares is up to 12%, the first 8% came from the current year dividend. That means if the total is 12, we take off the 8%, the same thing that was calculated up here, and I've done it again in this red box here, 32,000 preferred share dividend divided by the 400,000 preferred share value is 8%. Well, the total, if it maxes out at 12%, take the 12 and subtract the 8% to give us 4% additional. Okay, well, that participation rate applies to both the common and the preferred shareholders based on the relative preferred share value, again, on the balance sheet. The preferred shareholders get 4% of 400,000, so that's 16. The common shareholders get 4% of 600,000, so that's 24,000, giving a total participation of 400,000. But we're not done because now we have the leftover. The total dividends is 204,000. We take off the first 64 of preferred share in arrears. We take off the 80 combined current year preferred and the participating common, and then the additional 4% participation leaving us a remainder of 20,000, and that's it. There's no more participation because they max out at 12%, so all of that then gets allocated to the common shareholders, and that's all there is to it. All right, so let's wrap up with some key points to remember. First, always determine the dividends on preferred share dividends in arrears first. That's only if the preferred shares are cumulative then the current year preferred share dividends. That's a sequence. With non-participating preferred shares, the remainder of dividends paid after deducting preferred dividends are allocated fully to the common shareholders. In cases of fully participating preferred shares, we have to determine the participation rate. And that's calculated as the remainder to be allocated divided by the total share equity, common and preferred, in the example we had here, remember we had 60,000 remainder, we had a million in total preferred and common share value, so that was 6%. Then that remainder is allocated to the preferred and common shares 
pro rata based on the participation rate times the relative value of the preferred share equity value. So 6% participating times the 400,000 preferred share value was 24,000 in preferred share dividends. And the same 6% times the 600,000 common share value is $36,000. And if you're ever unsure, just remember that, you know, these two, the 400 plus the 600 must equal $1 million because that's the total shareholders capital. Next, when the preferred shares participate to a desired total, the initial participation is calculated as the preferred share dividend in the current year divided by the preferred share equity value, the same way we did it to determine how much the common shareholders would participate. So the 32,000 dividend divided by the 400,000 preferred share value is 8%. And then the additional participation rate for both the preferred and common shares is that desired participation of 12% here, that's where this comes from, minus the initial participation of 8% gives us 4% additional, and then that was applied pro rata based on the same approach as previously. After the calculation of any additional participation, finally the remainder is fully allocated to the common shareholders. So that concludes tutorial 17 on participating dividends. We hope you found it useful.